ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ ಮೀಲಿತಂ ಯೇನ ಥಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ Yeah, traditionally sadhus, they would be, they wouldn't wear shirts. Even anyone wouldn't wear shirts. Maybe in North India, in the cold climate. Not in South India. <laughs> okay, uh, the subject today is wisdom. This word you all know very well, if you read Srila Prabhupada's books. It's a well-known word in English. I was trying to think how to define it. It's one of those words which, you know what it is, but because it's an abstract concept, to define it isn't very easy, but I, the dictionary gave good definition. The ability or result of an ability to think and act, utilizing knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense and insight. And insight seems to be the essence here. It's a gestalt, or, or all these, of these different elements, knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense. And the insight is the uh, key factor. Uh, experience generally is generally thought that old people will be more wise because they've seen the ways of the world. Naive people, innocent people, they can easily be cheated. I used to see in London when we were distributing books how the uh, professional cheaters, and they, they would call people over and have some gambling match on the side of the street which was all set up and they, they knew they could spot who are the innocent people really. they've just come from some place where such things don't happen whereas Londoners you couldn't cheat them like that but people who come from outside or from some country like Sweden where cheating is uncommon So, uh, by then, ex by experience, you don't become cheated very easily. Or you don't expect people to be as good as you... In childhood, generally, you expect everyone to be good and nice, because as a baby, generally, everyone's nice to you. But then as you grow up, you find people are not so nice toward you. So you become experienced. You get some insights into human nature. So generally it's considered that older people are wise. Although, not if they spend their whole life watching TV. They, they just become old, old and stupid, that's all. Uh, Srila Prabhupada often used this word, wisdom. He often referred to Vedic wisdom. He also often referred to Vedic knowledge. In Sanskrit, there are terms which suggest wisdom, the, 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 that English word wisdom. Uh, Srila Prabhupada often translates Gyan as wisdom. Jnani as a wise man. Uh, pragya, that term is there. The prefix pra means a special, uh, increased. So pragya, one who has uh, special knowledge or more knowledge than most. Pragya vadangs chabhasha say. Krishna accused Arjuna of speaking like a wise man. Gatasunagutasuns chanana shochanti pandita. So pandit is also translated as Prabhupada translates it. A wise man laments neither for the living nor the dead. So um, yeah the, the often the knowledgeable is expected to be wise. Not always. Uh, sometimes you find people who are a lot of knowledge, but no, li very little realization. 
in the uh, verse giving the qualities of brahmanas, chapter 18, text 42 of Gita, the term comes uh, jnanam vijnanam. So Srila Prabhupada translates this as knowledge and wisdom. So the, the two terms are very similar. Vi also means uh, special, more So Vigyan's uh, Prabhupada translates this as wisdom, knowledge and wisdom. And wisdom gives, when it's uh, put in opposition to, or along with Jnana, Vigyan suggests that one has uh, knowledge, which is not simply theoretical, but he knows how to put that in practice also. Practical, practical application of knowledge. And especially wisdom is tested in unusual circumstances. That when one has insights into, into happen, it's, it's often thought that wisdom is uh, something like sattva gun compared to rajagun. That if someone remains calm and collected in the midst of calamity, doesn't act rashly, Someone is called wise. Of course, not to act at all, that can sometimes be unwise also. Sometimes to act quickly is, is uh, the very best thing to do, without waiting to think about it. But to, to act but quickly and properly, that would suggest wisdom. Srila Prabhupada, in a purport in Bhagavad Gita, says that a wise man is one who can discriminate between spirit and matter, between God's superior and inferior energies. So this is how Srila Prabhupada uses this word, wisdom. Now, uh, in English the word wisdom is often associated with uh, spiritual people or people who are considered to be or thought to be or expected to be spiritual, although, of course, the word spiritual is another vague term in, in English. <laughs> uh, and materialistic people and Mayavadis have appropriated this term, like all other terms, actually. The whole dictionary requires to be re rewritten by Vaishnavas because the the definitions given by, or the understanding of materialistic people, it's all wrong. What, what a Vaishnav considers to be good is different to what a materialist considers to be good. What a... Uh, well, that's not necessarily true. Just like I'm sitting in the sun here to soak up my day's ration of vitamin D. <laughs> so a materialist might think that's also good. But underlying it, there's the uh, the materialist things. You have to have your body fit so you can enjoy sense gratification. And I'm thinking, I have to have my body fit so I can serve Krishna. So if you go a little bit deep, the, in every platform, what the Vaishnava, the way the Vaishnava thinks and the way a non-devotee thinks is different. Na ya nisha sarva bhutani yasyang jagati sangyami tasyang jagati bhutani for some reason or other, I always forget that verse. Anyway, it's a very important verse, uh, which means that what is night and day, it's a black and white difference, a day and night difference, or uh, this, uh, yeah, between heaven and earth difference, between materialists and actually wise people. Muni, an actually wise person, his outlook is different to that of materialistic people. So uh, they have their, the Mayavadis, uh, they're considered to be, or expected to be wise. What we call Mayavadi is what Materialistic people just call them sadhu, I guess. So, <laughs> uh, 
there are wise sayings all over the world. There's, uh, in English, there's a saying which must be fairly recent. Uh, don't fight with a, don't pick a fight with a crocodile when you're in the water. I'm saying fairly recent because knowledge of crocodiles didn't come to England more than, I guess, maximum 300 years ago. That's probably a, that's probably an Indian saying, isn't it? Or an African saying, don't pick a fight with a crocodile when you're in the water. Or a stitch in time saves nine. There are such, Sayings in all cultures of the world are there not similar sayings like that? Uh, I know a few in Bengali. Nama machaye kana mama bhalo. Prabhupada used to. That, that's there in Gujarati, I think, is it also? Better to have a one eyed uncle rather than no uncle at all. Kana also means one eyed in. One eye only, yeah. So uh, in English, there's a saying, something is better than nothing, like that. So there are many sayings. And actually, many of them are derived the, the, in the vernacular languages of India. Many of them are derived from Sanskrit sayings, actually. And some of the Sanskrit sayings, they used to be quite well known in, in general speech of people also, just like this... Uh, uh, satyam bru yad priyam bru yad ma bru yad satyam apriyam from Manu. Speak the truth, speak pleasingly, don't speak uh, unpleasant truths, or don't speak even the truth in a manner meant to give uh, pain to others. So there are many sayings. Uh, the the, the Ram Charit Manas, so many sayings from that have entered into the language of Hindi and related languages. So there are many wise sayings throughout the world. Uh, in Indian tradition also there's Panchatantra, Chanakya collected so many sayings, some, which, some of which are spiritual, many which are material. And Prabhupada would quote, uh, who is a pundit? That's, uh, that's noble, it's not exactly spiritual. What is that? Matrivat paradareshu loshtavat paradravyeshu atmavat sarvabhutanam yah pashiti sapandita. One who sees all other women except his wife as mother. One who sees others' objects, others' property as simply some stone, useless, uh, valueless stone. One who sees others as himself, such a person is called a pundit, a wise man. <laughs> Other sayings from Charnakya, there, there are so many that Mata Yasya Grihe Nasti Bharyam Chapriya Vadini Aranyam Tena Gantavyam Yataranyam Tatagriyam. One whose mother is not in the home and whose wife speaks unpleasingly should leave for the forest because the forest is dangerous and difficult but then so is the home so you might as well be in the forest at least you don't have your unpleasant wife with you <laughs> that's the saying of Chanakya Prabhupada often used to quote these so there are many like that in your Tamil Nadu there's the Tirukuval is that how it's pronounced? Tirukovil Tirukovil sorry my Tamil pronunciation never got off the ground. Probably won't in this lifetime. So it's uh, no, Tirukovai is something else. Tirukural, Tirukural, that's it. Tirukural, yeah. Tiruk Tiruvapai is the, uh, that's the uh, Andal, and Tirukural is. Hmm? No, 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 it wasn't one of the Alphas, it was one of the uh, sheep. One of the Shaiva saints or who, who compiled that. Was it not? Oh, he's also called an Alva. Yeah, not an Alva. Yeah. Anyway, anyway um, there are so many wise sayings in that practical wisdom like that. Now the Christians are trying to take this over and saying that this is Christian. They're doing so much nonsense in Tamil Nadu. He's saying that uh, 
Sanskrit was invented by Saint Thomas and oh, so many rubbish, so many rubbish things. Well, now you're laughing, but they'll be teaching this in the school. So, this education means all lies. Kabir, Kabir in North India had so, yeah, but he's a rascal also. He had some good things to say, but he's also an atheist and. One of these people who talks about God but doesn't believe in him. There's so many like that. Einstein and Stephen Hawking. They, they mention God but they don't believe. Prabhupada quoted Kabir this. Uh, that uh, I can't remember. The Prabhupada quoted the Hindi uh, saying that, well, if, if a stone is God, then better I worship a mountain. He was against deity worship. So, some people call Kabir that the guru is God and a misunderstanding. So, he didn't have a clear idea. Anyway, there are so many wise sayings throughout the world and there are what's called wisdom traditions in, in modern English anthropology or sub-anthropology. They talk about wisdom traditions meaning... Uh, Traditions of the world, I guess, before the modern West caught up with them and put roads everywhere and McDonald's everywhere and factories everywhere that people were expected to be more wise <laughs> before they made this stupefying culture of the modern world in which people have more knowledge and less wisdom. So, like this, the native Indian culture which of America and and in Africa, wisdom in the traditions in which they they uh, they worship nature and they see the spirit in everything. And like this, there are wise men. You never hear of wise women. It's always wise men. Okay. Whoops, that's my misogyny burst out again. But actually, it's a fact. You don't hear of wise women. So, um, this is what is conventionally understood as wisdom some worldly wisdom. There's a saying in the West, streetwise, I was talking about that in, in London, and in New York City, if you're streetwise, means that you can, what they call, think on your feet, because it's really like being in a jungle. Everyone's out to, and not everyone, but the atmosphere is one of very fast moving, and you have to have your wits about you, to, to be able to think quickly, make a decision, act like this, because it's an extremely intense kind of life. So the same streetwise. So uh, this is conventional wisdom. Srila Prabhupada also used the word wisdom. Wisdom, that enlightenment, deep understanding of everything around you, I suppose. But uh, <clears throat> real wisdom begins with understanding the purpose of life. Otherwise, you might be uh, wise in living in this world, but if you don't know the meaning of life or the purpose of life or who we actually are, then it's useless, isn't it? You may be a wise man and in the next life become a, a dog or a cat or whatever. Ex, to be expert in living in this world is not really the qualification. The real qualification is to be an expert at getting out of this world. If, if you're actually wise, one sees that this world is miserable. That's the beginning of wisdom. If you don't see that this world is miserable, then you're a fool, however much you may have PhDs, or if you you may have uh, so-called wisdom and be expert in dealing and expert mediator or whatever, mm. making the peace between people. Henry Kissinger got the Nobel Peace Prize when when they bombed Vietnam and Cambodia and understood that politically it wasn't expedient to do it anymore, so. He became a peacemaker and got the Nobel Prize for doing something which was politically expedient. 
So a peacemaker is considered a wise man, but this is all all useless unless one has knowledge of the purpose of life. And actually, and, and if you don't even ask this question, what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? And if you don't pursue this, then all that wisdom is just completely meaningless. It's, it's like being one dog is more intelligent at how to get food than another dog. So is that a wise dog? Is it possible to have a wise dog? So if one is expert in living in this world, that's not wisdom. So, uh, yeah, within wisdom come, well, the Mayavadis, they can come within that also. Real Mayavadis are those who are not just uh, pin-up boys who make a personality cult around themselves, but they, uh, they're actually detached from this world knowing it to be meaningless. Uh, there are many examples within Indian culture. Many of them, they're just not even known because they just go away from the whole of the world and no one knows about them and they don't care. They don't want to be known. They're just... Uh, one who did become well-known in fairly recent times, uh, again, going back to Tamil Nadu, Ramana Maharshi, I'm just saying his name because I got a letter from someone that they were interested in Ramana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi, Tiruvanna Malai. He had his ashram out just outside Tiru. Ashram, he didn't really have an ashram. He just That was the whole thing. He just sat on a hill and did nothing. Didn't say anything, hardly spoke anything. And you could say that's wisdom because he thought, you know, well, what? There's no point in saying anything. There's no point in doing anything. There's no meaning in life in particular. So why do anything? Why say anything? So he just sat. That's all he did his whole life. And apparently he had a, an aura of great spirituality around, around him. Many people would come to see him. He wouldn't say anything to them. Occasionally he might say one or two words. The Buddha is supposed to be a wise man. Uh, for his detachment. So that's one sign of wisdom. And actually if you think about it, what is the point anyway? If you become a big man in this world, a big king or a big beauty queen or business magnet as they say in India or magnate as they say in places where people know how to speak English. Uh, what's the point? What's the use? What's the use of speaking English correctly or, in or incorrectly either? What's the meaning of anything? Why do anything? Why eat even? What, what, so just, if you look at it, if you think about it, this whole world's meaningless. Anyway. What does it matter whether I live or die? So this is one kind of wisdom to be uh, detached from the world, seeing that there's no meaning to it. There's only one problem with that kind of wisdom, and it's a very big problem. <laughs> there's no Krishna. <laughs> they forgot Krishna. They're in this, this same problem as everyone else who's not wise, there's no consciousness of Krishna. So they become wise in one sense, but they're in the same stupidity as everyone else, the same envy as everyone else, that they don't understand their relationship with Krishna. They went as far as seeing that this world is meaningless, and that's all. But they didn't go any further to find out where is the meaning, what is the meaning, why are we all here? They just stopped at the point of seeing it's meaningless and didn't go any further. They were content just to be detached from this world. So, without Krishna, tava kripa bhyana shakali nirasha. Without Krishna's mercy, everything is completely hopeless and useless. So, uh, we object 
very strongly to this kind of wisdom because if people are stupid, well, that's fairly obvious, not to them. The stupid person never realizes how he's stupid. Like the man sitting on the branch, sawing the branch, and not realizing that when the branch falls down, he's going to fall down too. So he may think that someone who advises him to sit on the side close to the trunk and not on the other side is a very wise man. Oh, he's very wise, sure. So intelligent. But uh, did that come? Did that come in BVK Sangha, that, that photo? Manida gave that to me. It's, it's a classic. And the, the man was dressed up in a nice suit and tie, looking like you know someone very intelligent and together. So, so uh, yeah, they they may seem very wise, but they're really in the same problem as everyone else. And stupid people, which means pretty much everyone, they think that these people are wise, but they're also stupid. The question is, why cut the branch at all? That's the next one. What, what's the meaning? Just like that story that came in Back to Godhead many years ago, that was uh, in one article that was contributed by uh, Haman Prasad Pada. You, you read my mind. Of the, uh, We used to make plays of this. Of, on one side of the river, there are people carrying big bags with big rocks in them. On the other side, there are people living happily and nicely. But the, on, the, on one side, there are people carrying the rocks, big heavy rocks. And on the other side, they're calling, come, come, come and join us. They say, well, I can't because we'll drown in the river with all these rocks. Then just leave your rocks behind. No, 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 they're my rocks. I've been carrying them all these years. How can I leave them behind? So they're attached to that which does them no good at all. What they need to do is throw those rocks behind, forget them, swim over to the happy side, where people are not so stupid as to carry rocks around. And they, they live a happy life. So it's like that from the spiritual world. We're calling, come, come to the spiritual world. People say, no, no, I got my house, my wife, my children, my bank balance, my car, my prestige, my camera, this, this, that, that. So they can't give up their attachments. So, yeah, so someone may give up their gross attachment, but if they're not attached to Krishna, then it's all useless. They, they may appear to be liberated, but you can't be happy without attachment. For some time you may feel happy, but our natural position is to be attached to Krishna. And in this material world, we're attached to home, wife, children, friends, country, and all this, and cricket teams, now that's the big thing in India, being attached to some cricket team. Be because we're not attached, we haven't developed our attachment for Krishna. So just to become detached is a relief, but the real thing is to become attached to Krishna. So we object very strongly to this kind of wisdom, although it is wisdom, but only in a primary level. Srila, I was just reading last night in the Bhagavatam. The two levels of renunciants. One is dhira, and one is narotama. Dhira becomes renounced from this world out of frustration. He sees it's miserable. So that's a beginning. But narotam, the best among men, he's not just renounced from this world, but he's attached to Krishna. So to, to advertise this level of being just uh, detached from this world, as being all in all, and then some wise sayings you say, from, whenever you speak there's some wisdom that comes out from your own experience, from your own knowledge. But Prabhupada's approach was quite different. His wisdom was from Shastra, Vedic wisdom. Not that you yourself, whatever... Whatever you have attained is by your own thinking, manan, shravan, manan, nididhyasanam. So forget the shravan and just manan, just thinking about 
things, reflecting on things, and you come up with all your all these realizations. And of course, shallow people, you can say shallow things to them and they'll think it's wise. So you can just say words like compassion, love, peace, and they think wonderful without thinking about what it means at all. So it's easy to fool people that you're wise. Just like we had one yogi who was supposed to be a great yogi. He was making some protest about corruption. The police came to arrest him. He got completely flustered. You know, the yogi should be just calm. But he, he jumped down from the platform and ran away all the way to Haridwar. And, you know, where's his wisdom? You know, he, he was so afraid of getting arrested. So didn't cut a very good profile. So uh, they have some kind of wisdom, but they really miss the point. So they're not really wise. The really wise person is the person who understands that that the real goal of life is Vishnu. Natevidu Swartagatimi Vishnu. Foolish people don't know that the goal of life is Vishnu. So even the most neophyte devotee is more wise than, uh, than a big mayavadi. And big mayavadi, they may be very detached and this and that. A neophyte devotee may seem to be like stupid. <laughs> so, you know, they're like acting, sometimes acting in a very childish way, especially young men come to this movement. And they may appear to be quite raucous and especially people, they're often surprised, especially when we went to Thailand and... Uh, which is a Theravad Buddhist country, where Theravad is like super Buddhism, original Buddhism, is where they're like, they, they expect the monks to be just very quiet, don't say anything. And here we are dressed as monks, jumping around, dancing, playing loud instruments, and they couldn't relate to it. I mean, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had the same thing. That when he went to Varanasi, the Mayavadis, sannyasis were criticizing that. Well, well, what kind of sannyasi are you? You're jumping around with all these low-class people, jumping around the streets. What is this? You're, it's like a disgrace to the sannyas order. So, uh, yeah, a devotee, he may seem to be not very wise because he's, he's very active in the world and it may appear, appear to be very uh, emotional. Wisdom, being wise and being emotional, the two things don't seem to go together. Wise seems to, wisdom seems to be more like sattva guna and raja guna seems to be more like uh, this platform of non-wisdom. And a devotee might seem to be more uh, active. But that action for Krishna, that is far superior to inaction just because one's detached. And this is what Arjuna had such a hard time understanding and Krishna finally convinced him and Arjuna finally became wise and decided not to be a so-called wise man and to fight for Krishna and to be an actual wise man. So devotees there act much better than, than nothing to do, nothing to say, nowhere to go, Ramana Maharshi style, is to be active in the world, distributing books about Krishna, giving people knowledge of Krishna. This is actual wisdom. So, this uh, Mayavadi, they may seem wise, but as Srila Prabhupada points out, all the Vaishnava Acharyas point out, that this thinking that I am one with everything, this is the last snare of Maya. They think they're free from Maya, but they're actually, they're still caught by Maya. They think they're free. It's like the mouse is caught by the cat, and then the cat lets the mouse go, and he thinks he's free, but just the mouse is getting quite a long way away from the cat and thinks, now I'm safe, and then the cat jumps, a big jump, and catches the mouse. Have you seen them do this? They, the cat plays with the mouse before, and they finally throw it up in the air a few times, and then they kill it. I never saw it in England. I only saw it in India. Cats do this. <laughs> Maybe they're more vicious, the cats over here. So, Real wisdom means to surrender to Krishna. That's all. All words should be defined in relation to Krishna. Compassion means to give knowledge of Krishna. Or to give prasadam, to, to, to help people make their relationship with Krishna. Wisdom is to know Krishna. 
and to act in that relationship. Love means to love Krishna. So all words should be defined in relation to Krishna. That's the point. So this so-called wisdom, all vague, nothing clear of the Mayavadis, we reject that. And worldly wisdom, well, it's useful as long as we're in the world. But real wisdom means to know Krishna. Thus, that's all. That's knowledge, that's wisdom. There's no difference on that platform. All right, any question about this? Yeah. Was Chanakya Pandit a devotee? It doesn't seem so. Uh, you see pictures of him with Shaiva Tilak. But we don't know. Just He's generally shown in pictures like that. We don't have any record that he actually had the Tripundra, what we call the, the Shaiva Tilak. Generally, he's depicted like that. But like I say, we don't know. You see some picture and then you think it must be real. That's the problem. It's like we don't know what most of the six Goswamis look like and we make pictures and then people think he looks like that. That's all. You th- in, in the West, they, portray, in, they have pictures of Jesus. He looks like a Westerner. In China, they make picture, the Christians make pictures of him looking like a Chinaman. We don't know what he looked like. It's, they just, we just presume that's all. So, so maybe he had that kind of, maybe he was a Shaiva. There's, there's nothing in his writings to suggest that he was particularly a Shaiva. As far as I know, I'm not an expert. Ramana Maharshi eventually became a follower of which Sat- Satya Sai Baba? Just. Ah. You mean Satya Sai Baba when he was going to his summer resort in Kodai Kanal? He passed. He must have passed to Ravana Malai. Yeah. Then. Ramana Maharshi said Satya Sai Baba was Krishna. Just see what a fool. What a fool. He, 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 then he surrendered to Satya Sai Baba. Well, the idea to surrender to Krishna is good, but if you think that Satya Sai Baba is Krishna, then you're a fool. So you just see, then, he, he, what is his spiritual advancement, actually? No actual spiritual knowledge. <laughs> Ramana Maharshi must have been old at that time and Satya Sai Baba quite young. Yeah, Tiruvanna Malai, his ashram is there. All the, yeah, and you'll, you'll see opposite the main gate, the, uh, there's all tea bars and Westerners, they come for meditation and this and that, and they're sitting drinking tea and smoking. This is, this, this is what they get, their spiritual advancement. So we want to preach there in Tiruvanna Malai. We want to preach everywhere. Another good place for preaching. Preach everywhere. Okay, you can get on. I'm preaching by writing mostly, so I'll get back to that. Hare Krishna.